Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Nora to explain here, bring you guys another board to two blue vortex discussion. Today I wanted to address the one thing I never for the life of me ever thought that I would have to address when it comes to the criticism of Boruto, which is there is now this growing belief that Boruto Zamaki is quote too edgy, end quote. And at first I thought maybe this is just a few trolls, but just like the memes that you have with Noel from Black Clover and Sakura from Naruto that completely mischaracterize the characters. I fear that we're starting to go down this road with Boruto and while I'm not arrogant enough to think that I can cut the head off the snake in this instance I do know from watching years ago how people with the platform roughly the same size as where I am now dogged out a few series that I'm a fan of and I saw people regurgitate their talking points like gospel despite it being tone deaf and easily debunked as someone who reads the series that they were dogging out and they were gaslighting their viewers into hating without actually to giving a substance-based critique. I want to go ahead and jump on this now. So this won't be as highly edited and highly polished as it would be if I gave this over to an editor because I want to address this now before it gets too far down the road, which a real cheap plug. I'll be over on Simply Choice channel as soon as some things clear up for me on my end schedule wise, because we got a really big video on Boruto's character being grossly misunderstood that is going to absolutely shut down a lot of the nonsense that people are still spewing in 2023. So is Boruto right now too edgy? I don't think so. In fact, I think the board we have now is actually a natural progression of his character, which I will touch on briefly, but I do find it odd that we've gone from one extreme to another when it comes to Boruto's character. First, you have people saying that they dislike Boruto because he was a brat who disrespected Naruto, someone who was near and dear to our hearts because we saw him grow up from being absolutely nothing, a talentless loser to being the beloved seventh Hokage, and now he had a disrespectful son talking crazy to him, even though that was literally the first arc of the manga and he grew out of that disrespectful brat phase right after that. However, the anime did stay there for a good while, but in the grand scheme of the character in both the anime and the manga, you're not even talking about a quarter of the character's growth and the overall totality of either the anime and manga, so that's really just a nitpick. It feels like there's always this moving goalpost when it comes to character Boruto, from he's disrespectful and ungrateful as a son to being unrelatable because he's a gifted prodigy who learns things super fast, which most people aren't prodigies. Most people have to work really hard in order to gain skills, even if they have an aptitude for something but then those same people they'll suck off Minato who was literally stated to be the exact same type of character and they'll suck off Sasuke who was literally told to us in Naruto's manga to have learned change in chakra nature as fast as Boruto did and in some cases even faster we went to Boruto is too lighthearted as a character and doesn't suffer enough to now we're at Boruto is too edgy Boruto is an edgelord it's nonsense it's dis ingenuous and I know I'm gonna get called a Boruto defense lawyer for this and I don't particularly care if someone makes that claim because I'm a firm believer my track record speaks for itself I have a long history of criticizing the franchise from 2016 to 2020 between my first channel Kryptonian Saiyan and this channel Naruto Explained. The record speaks for itself, especially if you watch the reviews during that time. However, we gotta call a spade a spade here. Boruto being too edgy, it's a Bikram yoga stretch, and I'm gonna explain to you why. The current situation that Boruto's in is one where He's gone from being this sheltered young boy raised by a loving family and friends living a life of status on multiple levels, which having that level of status cannot be overlooked when it comes to his character. Being a member of one of the four noble clans by being part Hyuga, being the grandson of the fourth Hokage who saved the village almost 40 years ago in the timeline, being the son of the seventh Hokage, a guy who saved the world twice before he ever became Hokage, Boruto is a character He's someone who had it all and he began walking down the path of becoming a shinobi. He went from having no sense of direction as to what a shinobi was because he merely thought it was something expected of him to now having a sense of purpose and wanting to replace Sasuke. Yet that was all fluff. 
He couldn't truly hope to replace Sasuke and understand the darker sides of the shinobi world without actually having that privilege. He was born with that privilege and then that privilege was actually stripped away. It was needed. It's the difference between someone studying the effects of poverty that it has on people and how there's a correlation to crime versus someone who actually grew up in poverty and lived around crime and they worked to escape it. Not everything can be understood secondhand actually going through something gives you more insight than anything a textbook or a lecture can tell you that's what the narrative has done for board to right now and at the end of board to Naruto next generations it literally spoon fed us that information by having board to say this feeling of being alone this feeling of being hated is something he didn't realize that kawaki was feeling all the time until now basically he knew kawaki had a hard time but he didn't know how it felt and that he didn't realize that this was the real reason kawaki would get so annoyed with board so often boruto has lost his life literally by having kawaki kill him genetically by losing his humanity replaced by momoshiki's data in exchange for bringing him back to life physically by having everyone's memories of boruto and kawaki be switched and spiritually just because the memories and emotions that they normally associate with boruto are now replaced with hate and betrayal due to the omnipotent shinjutsu he went from a loving and doted on son of the village to being the ungrateful hokage killer a criminal wanted for an offense that is an automatic death sentence no questions asked having to always be on the run looking over your shoulder at strangers wondering if someone is going to collect the bounty on your head or if that smiling sweet old lady on the corner is really an ambu black op from one of the villages using a transformation jutsu having to constantly stay on the run from code since we know for the first couple of years that Boruto was ducking code on and off again, running and hiding for his life. He was forced to survive in a world where the world wants him dead and doesn't want to listen to his pleas in the process. Meanwhile, the entire time, he's got a soul shared by Momoshiki and their thoughts are mixing in and out, which means that Momoshiki is constantly trying to gaslight him. And throughout this entire time, Boruto has had to live with that unless he somehow managed to suppress Momoshiki. But we'll talk about that in another video if it isn't up already. In order to walk the path of the Shadow Hokage, the thing that Boruto says he wants just so, so desperately, the only way for him to truly become Sasuke's successor was to have him gain the same experience that Sasuke did, but it has to be on steroids due to how sheltered of a life that Boruto lived prior to this. People have often given me crap for saying, hey, Boruto's too sheltered, he's too soft, and they're saying, well, it's not his fault that he grew up privileged. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying that if he's gonna walk in Sasuke's shoes, that privilege, that shelter has to be taken away. And that's exactly what the narrative did. Sasuke wasn't initially accused of being a Hokage killer, but he lived with a two-time Kage killer in Orochimaru for three years, since Orochimaru is credited with killing the third Hokage, and he's credited with killing the fourth Kaze Kage. He existed in the depths of the underworld for another year after killing Orochimaru throughout the events that take place after the Akatsuki suppression arc and after that he eventually became a Kage killer himself when he killed Danzo, the man who was formally named the Six Okage by the feudal lord but he hadn't gone through the formality vote by the Jonin council to make it official. You can't actually protect something from the shadows if you've never been forced to survive in the shadows themselves and actually understand why the shadows operate in the way that they do as kawaki had to explain the boards on the anime which by extension sounds like he had to explain it to a lot of these idiots saying edge lord boruto even scum have reasons for the things that they do and those reasons they might be morally gray but due to their circumstances they feel justified in their actions and when kawaki said this in the funato clan art it went over boruto's head the last three years have made boruto into someone who is very much coming off like you'd expect the student of Sasuke. He's focused, he's calm, he's calculated, he's very to the point. This should not come as a shock to anyone who's been reading this story because we saw in the flash forward sequence that a 16-year-old Boruto, which side note, I'm getting the age 16 based off what we were told in 2016, which is that the flash forward sequence takes place four years after the events of Boruto the movie. This Boruto is a polar opposite to the one that we saw in Boruto the movie. He's more somber, there was no smiling, and he's someone who has clearly been through something and it's changed him, and rightfully so. Taking Boruto from 
being someone who started out not knowing what it meant to be a shinobi, which is why Sasuke gave Boruto his headband, and make him into someone who finally grasped the truth of what it means to be a shinobi by making him give up his own life as a shinobi to protect the village. We've had a very slow progression of the character to get to this point where we see Boruto as he is now. It's a natural progression in my opinion, and I think part of the reason we see some of this Boruto is too edgy. That nonsense is, I think we have people who they checked out on the series early on, which hey, I understand, I've said before, I dropped Boruto's manga after chapter four and Boruto's anime after episode four, strictly because I was not a fan of the pacing, I was not a fan of the manga doing a recap and I waited until I heard about Kashi and Koji and Kawaki and I said, yo, I gotta get on the manga. So I think that you likely have people that they kept up with Key events that are happening with the story they might have read key chapters or if they're anime viewers they might have watched key episodes that they heard about but they missed everything that happened beforehand all of this renewed interest that boruto has that has come from boruto's quote shippuden end quote has people jumping into the story midway through and they're offering hot takes based off of limited info, which goes back to something that I'm a firm believer of when you don't know what the hell you're talking about because you don't have a firm grasp on the knowledge of everything about what you're trying to weigh in on, which there's nothing wrong with being ignorant. All of us are ignorant at something at some point. It's staying ignorant that's the problem. It's staying willfully ignorant that's a problem. If you're weighing in and you're not fully familiar with how we got to where we are, where you don't know the details, respectfully shut the fuck up it's no different than someone who started with the dragon ball story in the z era trying to argue characters like goku and tien they have no character arc because they're idiots who are weighing in after skipping half of the story where a large chunk of their character arc was actually set up and it makes moments like tien saving gohan from super boo and tien going into recluse mode after goku died versus cell it makes it hit home a lot harder but only if you understand where that character came from it's the same with boruto this more quiet and calculated approach to boruto this quote edgy boruto it wasn't super random the framework for the shift has been laid out since the very start of the chapter in fact boruto tells you at the very beginning in his monologue that he used to be a brat but he grew out of it we're seeing it he grew out of it boruto getting called edgy is odd an edgy personality is someone who is super anxious and is on the defensive all the time ask yourself is boruto on the defensive all the time he isn't he's not an edgelord he isn't screaming the emo vibes that people say until they're blue in the face about obito and sasuke he's not ruled by his emotions in the way that sasuke was at times in fact you literally see him actually doing a better job at compartmentalizing his emotions than sasuke did particularly when it comes to the uchiha clan he's too edgy yeah, Kishimoto purposely writes in a scene where the moment Boruto sees Himawari, he's shown breaking from that cold and detached persona he's put on and showing a more vulnerable expression when he sees Himawari. And he goes out of his way to tell Kawaki he's grateful Himawari looks well. His sister, she's still his thumbscrew. His friendship with Sarada, that's still his thumbscrew. It's not so much as he's edgy as it is people misusing a word trying to verbalize how they feel while being unable to properly articulate why they feel the way that they do. And when you're using a word wrong and you tell them that, they they try to change the definition of it, which leads to false narratives like this spreading like wildfire. It's cool if you want to say Boruto's tone is too serious right now. That's a valid criticism if you're ready to make an in-universe counter argument that uses the narrative to back up your claim. I feel like it's not an answer. I feel like it's something that everyone has, feelings. Here's the thing, feelings are not facts. Feelings can be used to persuade people, but a fact-based argument based on substance is gonna win out over feelings every single time. <laughs>